Yo, what's up, everybody? This is Tasteless here with another video uh, about RTS in general. This one specifically about the decline of RTS, as it's titled. This is from the YouTube channel ProTox, so P-R-O-T-O-X-X. -X. Um, and this was made about three years ago. Uh, I decided to do more content around this. By the way, I'll turn my Twitch chat on here. Um, actually, let's do this chat. There we go. Uh, I decided to do more videos talking about RTS in general because the more I watch these things, the more I'm appreciating how people see RTS in completely different ways. Uh, and I thought this guy's perspective was interesting. I didn't agree with all of it. Um, it's also been kind of fun to see people's different takes on why RTS isn't what it is today or wasn't what it was a few years ago. I know we're in a very different period of time where um, Stormgate is, is in the uh, beta right now and they're going to close that down and have another uh, test some point in time in the future. Zero Space is about to be coming out. There's other RTSs that are in the works. So uh, although it's been a bit of a dark history off and on for RTS, I do feel like the future is a little bit bright. Obviously this video was made before that was really a factor, but Anyways, I thought I'd take a look at what this guy had to say and uh, give my own take as well. Prostagma. Wanna make some improvements? Real-time strategy games. A genre that used to be immensely popular, but slowly faded away with the rise of MOBAs and grand strategy games. But perhaps there was another larger problem that contributed to the genre's downfall. So immediately, I'm sure most of you know this, but that is completely true that MOBAs started to supplant RTS games as the game to play. And a lot of the people that are still fans of RTS games that watch GSL, ASL, you know, your IEMs, um, they started in RTS and eventually switched into MOBAs. So that is completely correct. So what was the first RTS game? What other titles set the standard along the way and what led the genre to decline in popularity? When you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Depending on where you ask the following question, you will get a different answer. What was the first RTS game? This is interesting because I had never heard of War of Nerves. We saw this in another video that covered like the 40 plus years of RTS games. I have never heard of War of Nerves. I really thought that RTS games basically started around like the Dune series, Warcraft 1, stuff like that. So it's crazy to me. As someone who I would think, you know, I guess I'm an authority figure on RTS on some level, I kind of thought it started with my early childhood. I didn't realize it was like going back before I was born. This is 1979. I was born in 1984. I'll go with War of Nerves released back in 1979. But for being one of the first... By the way, I look at this. I don't even understand how this is a game you can control. Like, I look at this and I go, what is even happening? I guess it's trees and little blue and yellow guys walking around. But, like, is there micro? Is it really real time? I don't know. Maybe we should check that out in another video. Games categorized as a RTS game, you wouldn't say it would seem like a proper RTS game when looked back at today. At least when we compare it to RTS games we all know and love from the modern age. Fast forward 13 years to 1992 with the release of Dune 2, RTS games finally start to seem a little more similar to the modern games. Arguably Dune 2 is the first proper RTS game that matches with the gameplay of modern games. By the way, I never played the Dune series either. Started out with Warcraft 2 and Command and & Conquer in the same year. Um, I think at one point in time when I got a little bit older I had to go back, go back and buy Warcraft 1. You know, when people complain about the mechanical stuff in StarCraft and like you can't select everything, try going back to Warcraft 2 where you can select even less, and then try going back to Warcraft 1 where you can only have four units in a control group. Like, everybody has their limit on this. People end up in different places for how much of the game should be automated and how much um, of an army you should be able to control, but when you go back far enough, it gets pretty janky. In Dune 2, you gather resources to create units at your base, but you also required certain buildings within a tech tree to create other stronger units, much like many other RTS games. Also, it's interesting watching the units move in Dune. This is a game I've never played, but it does seem like they're they're moving on a 
square or diamond grid in the game, just watching them kind of move into each slot. Uh, the older the RTS, the more you'll see that they really are on invisible tracks on the ground. StarCraft Brood War, it's a little bit like this. It's almost it's almost too difficult to describe, but the newer and newer RTS is the unit movement gets a lot more fluid. ...of today. See like that? Not long after the release of Dune Doom, 2, Doom, many similar Doom. games followed, like Warcraft, Orcs, and Humans in 1994 and possibly the birth of the best-known RTS series of all time, Command & Conquer 1 in 1995. These games created the foundation for all RTS... Command & Conquer, by the way, I felt like this was the first RTS to really make RTS cool in a way that it just wasn't before. I do think Blizzard did a great job in the Warcraft series of making their stuff epic, and the kind of orc versus human uh i don't know that cool fantasy world uh they they took that in a really fun direction i think the music in warcraft uh, 2 was great uh the sound effects were great and the missions were really well thought out but it did just seem to me like command and conquer made a cooler rts the music specifically was great but the the sound effects the screams when you would kill somebody i think combined with the atmosphere there's also a visual clarity to the game um that I think it's hard to find something that compares to this. I feel, this is going to sound weird, but the closest thing I ever got to like a feeling that was like this artistically well thought out was uh, maybe if you go back and play Hotline Miami with the soundtrack combined with the retro graphics and the gore and um, the dark storyline, it really it really hit a certain pitch. That was very cool. So this this game was very ahead of its time. And I don't know that they even captured it as well in, in Red Alert and the other games. I think they kind of got it, but I feel like the original Command & Conquer, they were really on point. Games as we know them today. Although other titles may have added a twist to the gameplay, at the core, almost all RTS games are the same. You have some kind of headquarters where you gather resources with villagers or cheaper units to upgrade your buildings and create an army to fight off the enemy. You either play versus AI in a campaign or skirmish battle or against a human player. Depending on the type of play you are or were, you'd probably cater towards one of these much more than the other. This divided player base caused problems later down the line when the emphasis of RTS games surged towards competitive play with complex strategies. This then resulted into newer RTS games being unattractive to the average Joe who simply wanted to comp stomp some AIs by slowly building up a large force and crushing them. Okay, let me go back a second here. Later down the line, when the emphasis of RTS games surged towards competitive play with complex strategies. This then resulted into newer RTS games being unattractive to the average Joe who simply wanted to comp stomp some AIs by slowly building up a large force and crushing them. So this is, um, because I've only seen this video once before to, to see if it was worth covering um, for this. I don't know if I agree with this. Now, here's the truth, okay? I started my RTS journey as, I guess, a third grader or a second grader, completely uh, captured by the fantasy element of the game, whether it was the Command & Conquer futuristic uh, war setting or the fantasy setting um, of... Of, of Warcraft or sci-fi and Starcraft. And, and you know, all, uh, there was a bunch of other RTSs I messed around with. Obviously, we know where I ended up. But with Starcraft 2, first of all, it is correct that they put a big emphasis on competitive after Blizzard had lost out um, in all these opportunities that kind of came up in Starcraft 1 and were locked out by Kespa. Obviously, they were going to make a big push to kind of do esports on their own turf. But... Are you not able to comp stomp in StarCraft 2? Are you not able to do casual stuff in StarCraft 2? I'm almost asking as a genuine just question because when StarCraft 2 came out, I was in Korea trying to get ahead of everybody in the competitive aspect of the game as a player, uh, to be a caster. But does StarCraft 2 not have these casual modes? I thought it had that like everything else. It was underemphasized, Gauntlet. Interesting. 
it did seem like coming from StarCraft 1, when StarCraft 2 came out, the way they designed Battle.net was very strange. Battle.net for, um, I should maybe not Battle.net, like the the uh, online experience with matchmaking so much as, it, as uh, the interface for the client. It was in some ways worse than StarCraft 1. StarCraft 1's Battle.net was like uh, IRC where you could move through these different chat rooms very easily. The majority of the screen was the chat room or or a, a search bar for different games. So when I was a kid, I was too intimidated right when we got internet to really try to do uh, one versus ones with people. That was a little bit too uh, too much for me. So I would do like these like seven versus one comp stops. And that was what allowed me to kind of break into uh, the experience of playing with people if you were if you're as uh, as old as me, you might have been in a seven versus one comp stop where everybody turns against you and kills you. That was a thing that would happen. It didn't seem like there was a lot of like giga newbie experiences to be had maybe on Battle.net 2.0. It did seem like it was depersonalized. I frankly didn't care because I could hit a button and get paired with an opponent of my own skill. So I viewed it as, you know, a, a positive in that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like there is still a lot of emphasis on single player stuff and maybe starcraft 2 is the weakest example of that but let me let me have him carry on a good rts game is a game that mastered the combination of both micro and macro management micro management consists of you managing your separate units and their formations and movements around the map Macro management consists of you managing your resources and income and keeping an eye on the map and thinking about how to approach an assault. High level play focuses on the combination of both good micro and macro. However, in some games like Command and Conquer or even Age of Mythology, high level play includes an enormous amount of micro management. This level of play is not easily accessible for the average player because it requires a large investment of time to become intermediate, let alone mastering it. The player base that is interested in competitive play is small, because there are players out there who simply want to hop on a game and have some fun after work without having to spend countless hours worrying about becoming somewhat decent at a game to have fun. Because each RTS game was slightly different, even after becoming good at a particular RTS game, your skill wouldn't necessarily carry over, as well as switching from a shooter to another shooter. Yeah, I guess that's true. I do feel like you play a couple of RTSs and you could start to get the hang pretty quickly. I mean, I guess in shooter versus shooter, you are fundamentally doing the, the same thing, right? I mean, you're just clicking on somebody's head with a gun. Um... The biggest difference being you have these shooters where you die immediately, like PUBG or Counter-Strike or Valorant, and then you have these um, ones where you're generally more tanky, like Overwatch or Quake. To make a simple example here. The high skill ceiling and steep learning curve of RTS games gave other game genres the opportunity to appeal to a wider audience. And so the MOBA genre gained a huge amount of popularity because it was the bridge between ARPGs and RTS games. Big MOBAs like League of Legends and Dota are still... That is true, it is the bridge between ARPGs and, and, um, and RTS games. I never really thought of the ARPG thing, but yeah, of course, there was a lot of... Uh, dungeon crawlers like that back then Pretty and still are now today and they appeal to the people that enjoy the micromanagement of rts games in moba games you start off weak and you work your way up to being a force to reckon with and at the core this is also extremely similar to the rts playstyle in mobas losing is more forgiving and there is instant gratification giving you that short dopamine rush on rts games there isn't that short dopamine rush in fact this is something that is well yeah yeah i i think that's not true there are short dopamine rushes constantly in rts games that's why i'm so hooked on them i mean everywhere from keeping my worker alive when i scout them to uh, you know, getting a quick drop off in their base to the climactic fight where I overpower them. I do get a sense that this guy is coming from a perspective where maybe he never, and I mean no disrespect by this, got to that point where he was able to to play um, on a level where it was fun. 
I think what he's going to say next about shooting and immediately getting a kill and getting that hit of dopamine, sure, I get that. But I think if you're not having dopamine hits constantly in an RTS, you're not. You haven't been able to reach the point where you can do that. And I don't think that's the craziest thing to do. I don't think it's the hardest thing. I mean, it's. I think it's more of a challenge than most games, but I think it's still doable. ...throughout the entire gaming industry. They follow the market and make games more fun for casual players. Take Call of Duty, for example. They moved from kill streaks to score streaks, and they also started adding specialists years ago with Black Ops 3 to give worse players an easier time by basically handing them free kills, to give those players that short dopamine rush regardless of skill in every game. If I'm being entirely honest, that topic could be a video in itself, since it has its own pros and cons and it could be a large discussion. But the point I'm trying to make is that perhaps if the RTS genre focused more on appealing to the casual players instead of esports and competitive multiplayer play, it might have been more popular today. Now I didn't mention this before, but the players that enjoyed the macro managing more than the micro management have moved on to grand strategy games like Total War, Civilization, and possibly city building and industry games like City Skylines and Anno. All of the above mentioned games are overwhelmingly popular when compared to any old school RTS game today. Further proving my point that the RTS genre has been on the decline for years. Now one series that could have had the potential to still be relevant today was Command and Conquer. Command and Conquer was produced by Westwood Studios, the same company that created the first true RTS game being Dune 2. However, in 2003, Westwood Studios was taken over by EA, and as you all surely know, EA isn't exactly known doing much good with game series and titles after purchasing these smaller companies. I don't know about, I actually just don't know about the EA thing. I know EA has a bad reputation, uh, is kind of the, you know, the corpo game company, kind of like what Blizzard's reputation is right now. Uh, I, I can't speak to why. I will tell you, I lost interest with Command & Conquer um as a franchise a long time ago and so i don't know i don't know i mean most of the people i talk to that like rts it's like you know when you talk when i think of command and conquer i think of like the first one red alert that kind of stuff but um anyways Whatever the last good Command & Conquer game was is up for discussion, but I think it's either Command & Conquer Generals or Command & Conquer 3 Tiberian Wars and its Kane's Wrath expansion. Whatever your opinion may be on the last good in Command & Conquer game, I think we can all agree that Tiberian Alliances and Command & Conquer Rivals were absolute horseshit and a disgrace to the series name. <laughs> What made Command & Conquer so great were aspects like the great soundtrack and visuals. Yeah. The relatively simple playstyle with not too many buildings and just one resource being money to spend on everything in the game. Not multiple resources for every unit, just cash. Simple. Money. A fantastic campaign with briefing videos... So this guy really wants, I think, just a different experience than I, I think me or the people that are going to watch this video want when it comes to a game, but even the resources being so simple. Anyways, I'll get to this next part. Had surprisingly good acting also helped, and the games were just a great single-player experience, but just as easily could be a fun LAN party experience as well. Also, I know the Command & Conquer isn't the only RTS game series that was ruined over time, at least according to the fans. I've heard negative things about Age of Empires 3, for example, but then again I've also heard many good things about the remaster of the second game. Yeah, Age 2 is good. Now, two other prime examples of what made a good RTS game were both Empire Earth and Age of Mythology. Both of these games had an excellent single-player campaign that was diverse and had a decent story to it. Both of these games can be played easily by the average Joe, given that you don't play online or against the hardest AI. Now, Age of Mythology let you play like a casual, but you could also play competitively online, especially with the remastered extended edition. But at that point you run into the game not being for casuals any longer because the same problem of new RTS games arises, player versus player just isn't for casuals. And you will get harassed constantly with rushes and that playstyle just isn't appealing to those casual players. And I understand that that type of gameplay is appealing to some players including myself, but the classic RTS experience was to turtle and to build up a large force to annihilate your enemy. 
Online, you will have to adapt to other tactics because you will never be able to beat your opponent if you do not damage their economy by harassing them constantly. Again, if this does fit your playstyle, there is nothing wrong with that. In fact, I do enjoy this type of playstyle sometimes. However, the majority of the RTS players were not interested in that type of gameplay or they would have stuck around. I feel there's like a lot of assertions here. Um, for one, I you know, look, I think when you when you get into a game, like let's take RTS since that's the topic of this. People are looking for different things, right? Some people really want a campaign for the story. Other people want a campaign where they can um, they can try to beat it and then beat it on the next most difficult level or, or, or set a new score as far as time goes. Some people, like I said, you know, uh, uh, my first month of StarCraft Online, I was doing comp stomps. That was fun. And I eventually moved up to going to live competitions, you know, trying to fight for the ability to represent my country at a global tournament. Um, but I think what's important to realize here is that everybody's looking for something different. And I feel like this guy's... Thank you for the sub, your fellow human. You fucker! Appreciate it. This is so stupid! I think everybody's trying to get their fix, right? Like, if okay, let's take fighting games, for instance. The Tekken 8 just came out, right? This game is selling extremely well. Tekken is like the brood war of fighters. Tekken is so hardcore and so complicated. I have decided I'm probably not going to learn it unless something dramatically changes in my life or there was an opportunity for me there because I see how hard it is. Um, but it sells very well because they've put a lot of money into the, the storyline. They're doing a lot of great stuff with training modes. And so they're able to sell a game where everybody can get the experience that they want out of it. And most people that get tech and never get into hardcore mode or, or do anything serious in multiplayer, they might, you know, have some games with their friends on a Friday night. But um, I think it goes to show you that when you have an RTS game coming out, you really need to make sure you fill a series or tick a series of boxes, right? Do you have, like, let's get us out of the way, the esports box, the competitive mode, a ladder? Do you have a campaign with a good story, um, with different unique challenges for a beginning player? Can that scale up in difficulty to where someone who's hardcore can also have fun with that? Do you have a map maker where games can be made? I mean, ironically, Blizzard's ability to make games that had map makers changed the industry in a way that because Blizzard wasn't really paying attention to what was happening in their own map maker, it changed the whole gaming industry and, and it ended up with them losing control of a lot of the gaming industry. Tower defense games were made in the StarCraft map maker. MOBAs were made, especially in the Warcraft map maker. Um, there's plenty of other uh, things that were happening. Uh, so I feel like this guy is clearly coming from a casual perspective, but I think he presents no real valid argument that you know just because one area is filled the other isn't now maybe starcraft 2 could have done more for for casuals maybe they you know just like you guys ever played heroes of might and magic the old one i guess that apparently by the way they play that competitively online i've discovered this recently on twitch uh but you know you could go through that campaign for heroes of might and magic or you could go to these custom games there were all these different things you could set and you could basically tell your experience accordingly. Um, but yeah, you know, it's it's a situation where I think if the next RTS is going to succeed, they really need to tick those boxes. Thank God Blizzard gave competitive StarCraft 2 a chance. It's still here today. I'm literally going to go cast GSL tomorrow, by the way. Um, and I do think it's a great advertising mechanism, as long as the company's smart enough to get microtransactions in there and take advantage of the advertising they've already got. Uh, let me let this guy finish his thoughts before I go on anymore. With that being said, the RTS genre isn't dead. There are still remasters that are being made today. The RTS genre just is a lot less popular than what it used to be, and some large companies have ruined certain series. Others didn't see the point to create more RTS games from a financial perspective, and some players have simply moved on to other game genres to get a similar experience with a lower barrier of entry.
Now before I end the video off, I just want to mention one more thing. The RTS genre is subjective. For example, Total War games kind of fall under RTS as well, but are also grand strategy games. There are games that are also RTS games, but are very different to the games. Sorry, I just realized as well, this whole video, the quality has been so bad. Uh oh. All right, let's go back down. Maybe go to. Oh, did I just ruin this video games experience? I've mentioned in this video being classic RTS games like Frostpunk where you fight against the environment instead of an enemy AI or player and they are billions where you fight off waves of zombies. And so we reach the end of this video. I'm sorry guys, why is my internet bad If right you now? enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like down below. What is happening? All right, go back down to low quality so we can finish this thing. Oh my Maybe god. Maybe consider sharing your fondest memories or favorite RTS game of all time in the comments down below. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace. So, one of the issues as well that I take from this is when you're... And this I see this with a lot of game publishers. They're always trying to appeal to the, the newbie, which I think is good. But don't let that redefine what the game can be and should be because those new players they're going to be the first to drop you they're they're the people that walk away from anything that's uncomfortable and they are always going to be ready for the next thing you can bend over backwards for new players they may or may not stay but it's the people that really are into this kind of thing that you also want to make sure you can capture. So it's a real balancing act. And I don't think it's an either or. I think you have to figure out how to do both. I mean, you know, co-op commander for StarCraft II. I've never even messed with that thing. I only did competitive multiplayer, laddering, tournament stuff. I never even beat the Legacy of the Void campaign. I got to Heart of the Swarm, uh, and it, it just wasn't for me. So, I, look, maybe I'm a weird exception, but I'm also a person in the space um, that makes content around hardcore stuff that does have an audience and does have people that are really interested uh, in it. So, I, it seems like the larger thesis of this guy's uh, argument is basically that they focused on competitive instead of focused on single player. But I would, I would counter that, or I guess casual, not necessarily single player, but casual in general. I would counter that with the fact that there are maybe a total of five to six RTSs that focused on competitive out of the hundreds that are out there. The vast majority of people that have the RTS experience, it is the casual experience. It is against PCs, uh, sometimes on these mission scenario things. Um, you got to move up to hardcore before you go into multiplayer. And by the way, this argument as well that... Uh, for instance, you know, the, the statement that, well, MOBAs replaced RTS games because you had the um, kind of dungeon, it mixed the kind of dungeon crawler isometric experience uh, with an RTS experience where you could really micro the, the hero and fight. And that was more appealing. First of all, League of Legends and Dota are really complicated games. Dota is another one where like in another universe, I would be playing Dota all the time. It's not big in Korea, so I'm kind of beholden to what's popular here. But League of Legends is complicated as well, and I think Dota is much more hardcore. All these games that are popular are crazy hardcore and not friendly to new players. Counter-Strike, you get shot in the face. Now you got to sit out for the entire round. PUBG, you can spend 25 minutes not seeing a player get shot in the back of the head and have to start over. RTS games, you can forget a pylon or, or make you know a building a little bit late and completely change the trajectory of your entire fucking game, play for 30 minutes and lose. I mean, just to go back to MOBAs, we've all, everybody's been in a team game where it's it's, get, it's getting toxic. Your teammates either won't listen or are or, or, uh, horrible. You know, it's hard to get into and learn. I, I've played fighting games like Tekken or Street Fighter where I don't block the first hit and I'm then comboed to death. So where it, where are these games that we're talking about when it gets into multiplayer? that are great for casuals. I mean, I'm serious. Like, which one are we talking about? All these games have crazy high skill ceilings. Some of them are extremely punishing. 
And uh, that's kind of the rush from it. And that's why people that do competitive multiplayers are a different breed. And I don't know if you're ever going to have um, a multiplayer experience that has the elements of competition along with uh, this really comfy casual experience. And maybe that's kind of where MMOs come in or these other types of games. But um, that's where I take that. So I, look, I, I'm not trying to uh, rag on this guy, but I would I would reject his his take here that it was that they needed to appeal more to casuals. I think most of the RTSs we don't even think about in Korea, um, or sorry, not in Korea, in in, in the world, are uh, just tailored to casuals. You know, and people used them up, played through them, and moved on to the next thing. So I think for the future of RTS, you need to really make sure that you can give an experience to every kind of player. The player that loves the, the you know, the campaign, the storyline, the person that likes doing different kinds of custom games and challenges, multiplayer with teams against computer, mass multiplayer team versus mass multiplayer team, hardcore solo play, all that stuff. And then I think you're going to have an RTS uh, success, and that's what I'm hoping for in the future. If you like this kind of content, thank you uh, so much for joining me for it. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about RTS. Is it still in a decline? Are we going to be in a renaissance? Uh, and, you know, are there these old RTSs that you like that you feel like game developers haven't uh, given attention or love to that they could be taking things from and maybe putting into their new games? Also, please check out Tasteless Threads uh, where you can find my merch shop. we got a lot of cool RTS stuff, uh, RTS-related stuff there that I think you would enjoy. Have a good day, and I hope to see you in a future video. Bye-bye.